that have no relevance today. The same Holy Ghost is still alive today. The same fire is still available today. This fire we have to stir up. We have to keep burning. When the hand of God comes on you and the fire of God comes on you, let me tell you, God will raise you up. And I don't care what area of life you find yourself in. If you will be used of God, you have to have the anointing. You have to have the fire of God, whether you are in ministry or business or in government or whatever realm you find yourself. As the old African-American preacher prayed, and he said, Lord, dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit and set my heart ablaze that I may burn for you. You call to write history. This first ever Revival Ministries International Stewardship Bible was created to present stewardship scriptures on tithing, finances, and possessions from Genesis to Revelation. At over 30 years in the making, this Bible is one of a kind and presents readers with 120 personal sermon notes from Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. This Stewardship Bible is a historic ministry resource providing an in-depth look into the scriptures through the lens of godly stewardship guaranteed to bless and transform your life. The Bible you hold is a gift that will continue to give for generations to come. Each Bible is made with the finest materials, produced in first-class manufacturing facilities, available in the authorized King James Version or the Amplified Classic. Inspired by God, 
and crafted with excellence. Revival Ministries Stewardship Edition Bible. businessmen, businesswomen, that God raises you up to impact the world for Jesus. Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Why? Because they realized there was a life on the inside of them that didn't just produce eternal life in their spirit, it produced life in their flesh. It's in our identifying with what he did for us 2,000 years ago. This is not something that has to be done. This is something that was already done. You can't earn your healing, but you have to learn how to receive your healing. I see you walking in prosperity. The devil can't stop your blessing. The devil has already lost. He's a defeated foe. I see you walking in perfect health all the days of your life.
one person that stood up. Their names were known because they made a stand.
Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Well, welcome to night number 800 of the, 810 of the stand. Come on, we can do better than that. But it's also night number one of Righteous, the men's conference. And for those who are watching with us tonight, we want to welcome you and you can grab your seats for a few quick moments, just a few quick announcements and we'll get right back into a time of worship. And we want to let you know that we are here nightly and that's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those who are watching on uh, any of the social media platforms, we'd love for you to go ahead and like and share the broadcast. Go ahead and get it into a few more homes. So if you're on Facebook or you're watching from YouTube, go ahead and like and share. But we also want to let you know you can also view from RevivalTV.com. So you can go right to RevivalTV.com and you can go ahead and tune in to the broadcast. We'd love to have you with us tuned in again. And again, we're here nightly and that's here from Sunday p.m. through Friday p.m., 7 Eastern Standard. But I just want to let you know for the men's conference, we are here tonight, 7.30, and then tomorrow and Friday, we're here 9.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. And then also on Saturday morning, we're going to be here at 9.30 a.m. So we'd love to have you. If you're in or about the Tampa Bay area, we'd love to have you just come on out, go ahead and pre-register and come right here under the Pavilion of Dreams at the River at Tampa Bay Church. And we want to let you know this is a live broadcast. It is interactive and you can go on to revival.com again, but you can also call the number on the screen, 1-866-85-RIVER if you have a prayer request. We are standing by to pray with you and for you. So go ahead and call that number. And if you don't as yet follow Dr. Rodney on the Instagram platform, we want to encourage you to go ahead and do so. You can get a lot of real-time updates right there on the Instagram platform. Search for him, all one word, Rodney Howard Brown, and you can go ahead and follow all posts. Will be Pastor Rodney himself. I mentioned uh, revival.com, and I want to tell you that you can go into revival.com and you can see all the photos from tonight. So if you're here tonight, you don't have to pull out your camera amen we ask that you keep your cameras down no cameras on no recording no photographs of any sort you can go into revival.com and all the photos from tonight will be on there as well all the past 800 and nights uh, 809 evenings it will be on revival.com as well also on revival.com if you have a call of God on your life and for those who are watching or here right now in the pavilion and God has called you into ministry would love to have you go on to riveruniversity.org and you can go ahead and receive a scholarship tonight Dr. Rodney is scholarshiping everyone who would answer that call tonight go on to riveruniversity.org and fill out the application on there and someone from the River University administrative office will go ahead and follow up with you go ahead and take a hold of that scholarship tonight. We want to let you know also that the next intake will be in January 2023. So you do have a bit of time. Go ahead and start that process right now. And for those who want to watch, uh, uh, rather attend the Bible School online, we do have an option for you. If you're not able to make it here in person or if you're out of the country, can't make it, there is an option for you as well, and that is going to be River School of the Bible Online. And you can go to revival.com slash RSB, and you can go ahead and sign up this evening as well. Now, for the men's conference, as we covered again with you, I want to let you know from tonight again through Saturday morning. So you have tonight's session. If you're not here tonight and you're on your way or you can make it, please go ahead and come, amen. Don't watch from the living room. We'd love to have you here with us. As of Saturday, we wrap up with an amazing barbecue for the men here. And so if you have purchased your tickets for the men's barbecue, we wanna just encourage you to stop by in the lobby at the Studio B booth and go ahead and pick up your ticket. If you have not as yet purchased one, unfortunately, all the tickets are sold out. But if you have purchased your ticket already, please stop by at the Studio B uh, restaurant in the booth right there, and you can go ahead and pick up that ticket. We also want to let you know of River School of the Healing. So if you are sick in your body and doctors have given up on you, we want to let you know God still heals. Amen? He never stopped. And we do have River School of Healing and it's two weeks of being under the word and under the anointing. Come and receive your miracle. Amen? 
If you're going to go home, don't go home from sickness and disease. Go home healed and whole. But there's two weeks that will turn your life absolutely around, and that's going to be from the 5th, which is going to be Monday, September 5th through the 16th. And the times are a little bit different. It's going to be an afternoon session, which is going to be from 1 p.m. through 6 p.m. That, again, is 1 p.m. through 6 p.m., but you can go to revival.com slash RSB and uh, River School of Healing, rather, and go ahead and sign up. So you go to revival.com and go ahead and sign up on there as well. Now, we do have the car show coming up, and that's going to be September the 24th. So if you have a car that is car show worthy, we'd love to have you with us. And you can go on right now to the rivercarshow.com, and you can go ahead and register. The car show will be right here. Where else could you come to an amazing car show that is covered right here in Florida? Amen. So we'd love to have you with us. Go ahead and join us here, whether you have a car or you want to be a part of it, we'd love to have you here as well. Now, we do have coming up in October the Fall Ministers and Leaders Conference, and that's going to be Sunday through Sunday, and that's going to be two sessions a day. That's going to be October 23rd through the 30th, and that's going to be the morning sessions at 9.30 and the evening sessions at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'd love to have you again. Go to revival.com. Go ahead and register. No charges at all. 16 meetings. Amen. Eight days of being under the word and under the anointing. Now, we just want to talk to you about the bookstore really quickly here. We've got some products. We're going to toss these out for you here. But we want to let you know that right here at the bookstore, or you can go to revival.com or go on amazon.com and search for the author, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, and you can pick up any of Dr. Rodney's teachings. You can pick up the book, Socialism Under the Microscope, The Phantom Virus. You can pick up The Killing of Uncle Sam, The Killing of the Planet, Seeing Jesus as He Really Is, The Anointing, The Touch of God, and we can go on to so many more books. But we'd love to have you go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do just pretty quickly here, we've got some merchandise. We'd love to go ahead and pass out. We're going to just bless someone here today as far as our arms can get. That means if tomorrow, those who might be sitting a little further back will be sitting a lot closer. Amen. But I want to show you this really quick before we pass out this here. This is the RMI Stewardship Bible. You can pick that up right now in the bookstore. You can pick it up online. And you can pick it up in the King James Translation or in the Amplified Classic you can match it to your outfit if you're that kind of person. You can get it in blue, black, or burgundy. Amen? So I promise you, you won't find another Bible like this. There's 120 teachings in there. And uh, we'd love to have you go ahead and stop right by in the bookstore again. You can pick up either one of those. So I'm going to have my helper go. You can't give this one out. We're not authorized. And he's going to pass this one out. Just go ahead and just toss those out really quickly here. And we do have a promotional clip that we're going to pray f play for the men's conference. Let's go ahead and roll that, and we'll get right back into a time of worship. Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Makes tremendous power available. Dynamic in its working. Throughout history, there was always one person that stood up. Their names were known because they made a stand. As I was with Moon, so shall I be with you. There is an army of men that are being raised up in this hour to part the sea.
heart till the storm blows over and I'm still standing here. Well, you set my feet on a solid rock. I am till the storm blows over and I'm still standing here. Well, you set my feet on a solid rock. I am on the mountain top till the storm.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, he says his feet, my Savior that cursed tree. Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heaven's Messiah's tomb, and all of
Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Lord, have the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from his eye. No greater sacrifice. What he's
Come on and give him the biggest shout of praise and give him glory. Come on and lift the pavilion tonight. Lift those hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you for your presence on this field tonight as hungry men have come on this night come to receive from you from your mighty hand let not one person leave this place the same as they came on this 810th night of the stand as we make a stand for our brothers and sisters that cannot as we refuse to bow our knee, for we bow to one king, and his name is Jesus. I pray that you sweep this place between now and Saturday, and even those that stay over for Sunday, between now and the weekend, shake every life. Turn everything inside out. Put your fire on each person. Pour fresh oil upon them. Let the new wine be poured out and let the river of God run through this place. And Father, they're going to take it back to their homes, their churches, their businesses, and their realms. And we see whole regions shaken by your mighty hand. And we thank you for it and we give you praise. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you've done just in the past year and what you're going to do in the next 12 months and we give you glory and praise and honor for you alone are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all praise in Jesus name and everyone said Well, welcome to Righteous Men's Conference 2022. As long as men have roamed the earth, there's never been another one just like this. It's going to be awesome already what's taking place, what the Lord is doing. I want you to turn and greet two or three people. We're going to do a couple of songs here. Just turn and greet two or three people and tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. And then you may be seated or stand and worship with us.
kingly and priestly and minister this ministry unto him. An uncommon laborer working till the Lord shall come again. I found an oasis of love The pastures of green year-round A new life is mine With peace from above I found an oasis of love I found an oasis of love The pastures of green year-round A new should do that one more time. Come on, get this in your spirit. This is what God's going to do with you. Every single one of you. Even when you get back home. In your home, your church, your business. Come on, let's do this together. There's power in the name, power in the name, power in the name of Jesus. Demons have to go because of what I know. They know there's power in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name, power in the name, power in the name of Jesus. Demons because of what I know, they know there's power in the name of the Lord. I'm common laborer, send out the Lord of the harvest. All the harvest. An uncommon laborer, send. This ministry unto him An uncommon laborer Working till the Lord shall come again I'm an uncommon laborer Send out the Lord of the stars An uncommon laborer Send out the Lord Harvest, to this harvest, kingly and priestly, and minister this ministry unto him. An uncommon laborer, working to the Lord, shall not come again. I found an oasis of love, the past. you welcome all the way from Tampa, Florida as they come now, the Righteous Brothers. They're going to bless us.
Father, I see that you were drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come, let it live in me. This is my prayer, this is my plea. Father, I see that you were drawing. Well, great job, guys. Great job. Orchestra, great to have you here tonight. Give them all a great God bless you. Well, you may be seated. If you got here a little earlier, you'll notice that we had uh, Ricky Bobby out in the lobby. And we got a little clip. Just roll that, if you would, please. Hey, I'm Ricky Bobby. 
Plain and simple, I'm the best there is. I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. I'm a big, hairy, winning machine. And come race day, I'm coming for you. If you ain't first, you're last. That's the registered trademark name for Ricky Bobby Inc. That's <laughs> Eric. Just greet the people tonight. <laughs> if Jesus ain't first, you last. Okay. okay. Anyway, we're having, a, we're having a great time. We want to give something away to everybody here tonight. So if you want to just tell them what we're giving out. Yeah. It's important to stay very hydrated. And also, we put this vitamin pack together for you, for everybody to build your immune system. If you didn't have one of these, the ushers are going to hand these out. And when you open this up, it's got the directions of exactly how to use it. You know, our food is nutrient deficient, so it's very important, especially if you have any type of symptoms or cold symptoms or anything that you stay supplemented. And in your pack, do not open it right now, it's sealed, but all the directions are there. And you always take supplements with food, always with food. So in your pack, uh, you have I think I have it pretty much memorized. So you have vitamin C, you have vitamin A, you have vitamin D, you have zinc, and you have black cumin oil. And uh, don't open this right now, it's sealed. And uh, there's directions in here on how to take these, and you must take them with food. And then as you take these supplements on a daily basis, or if you have any type of symptoms, then of course this is a, a stronger dose each day for four days. And um, we're going to hand these out to be a blessing to you. So it's important also, uh, they say 50% of all the people that go to emergency rooms, one of the things that they say is they're dehydrated. So it's very important to stay hydrated. We have free water on the field for you with electrolytes in the back, totally free. So make sure you stay hydrated. And uh, so if you want one of these packs, raise your hand, we'll get it to you. Did, that, did these uh, vitamins help you win races? <laughs> well, I want to go fast. No, no. <laughs> these vitamins will make you number one. I'm trying to stay out of character because I don't have my outfit on and everything, but I definitely got into it. But, um, you know, on race day, which is every day, you want to be first and not last. Shake and bake, baby. All right. Pastor Allen. Okay, we want to give away something yet tonight. Really, two. We're going to give away two, we're going to give away two weapons tonight. So, um, Actually, yes, but we also have some other giveaways as well, if that's okay, because yeah, you have a couple yeah, things here. Work. So you should have gotten a red ticket tonight at the booth. Uh, at, 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 well, we'll go through all that right now. So if you got a red ticket, this is not from the fishing booth, but from all the other booths, you would have gotten red tickets. How many of you guys got red tickets? Can I see oh, Okay. So we're going to start off with this buck knife. We got, how many of you remember last year we did a several different types of knives? Let me get one of you guys up here. You can hold this for me. Oh, Pastor Ray, you're the best Vanna White that there is. So this is going to be, uh, this is the, the U.S. made, of course, buck knife. And uh, really, really cool. Here, I'll show it to you. You know, these are my favorite knives. This is what I started hunting with all those years ago back in Africa. And this is the Alaskan Guide Series is what they're and called. Be so they're before I even got a rifle, I would just run in. And do yes. that. Uh, really, that. I really love Buck Knives. It's my awesome. favorite. I mean, there's many brands, but I love them. I love them. So we'll actually be giving away one of those Buck Knives every single service. So if you've got one of these tickets, now these will only be good for today. Tomorrow will be a different color. So this is the only night. So you don't need any reason to save these. But here we go. For the Buck Knife, 700. <laughs> that should be all of you. Six, four, eight. Why is it back? 
Oh, there he is, all the way back. All right, run on down here. Y'all give it up. Don't hurt yourself, but you run on down here, and we'll meet you halfway. All right. You want to check the numbers? Shake and bake. Now, if you go out to one of the booths, one of the booths that out there is for tactical keychains. These are for everyday carry knives. You may have seen these as well as the, the magnetic keychains that are made right here in the good old USA, amen? So these are machined and made in the United States, an amazing business. Two brothers, Jordan and Ace Roberts, they're back there. They brought eight guys from Oklahoma, so make sure you go by and see them. And at MMM USA, those are also made here in America, machined grills. You need to make sure you get one of those. But they're gonna be giving away these as well throughout the week, so it's a custom-made knife case plus the knife and a couple of the keychains that you could use as well. How many of you would like to win this? Oh, there's a set of two knives in here. Wow, that's right. So there's actually one of the Tuck XLs, they're called the Tuck, and a Tuck Junior, Tuck Mini. So make sure you know that you're getting two knives. That's pretty awesome, I didn't even know that. Yeah, All you, right. you can have one and give one to your kid. Or, yeah, maybe, think about that. Okay, here we go. 700, 727. 700, 727. Well, if that's, we'll run on down here then. Just yep, wave your hand, stand there all night, or run on down. We got one for you. Awesome, man. These are great. All right, here we go. Also for a Tuck, Tuck XL, Tuck Mini, plus the two keychains, 700, 778. 700, 778. Run on down here, bro. Awesome. And if you have any questions, of course, stop by the Tactical Keychain booth. And, and of course, Jordan Ace and his guys are back there, and they will be glad to answer any other questions as well. Even the blades are all machined. They're all t they do the whole thing. Now, Pastor, this is awesome. Yeah, I wanted to give away two of my study Bibles every night. So. so this is a burgundy leather. Who would like to win this one? Oh, okay, all right. Here we go. All right, 700, 204, 204, 700, 204, in the red bow tie. Awesome. All right, this is for a black leather one. Well, they're all leather, but the best leather you can get, I promise you that. 700, 677, 700, 677. Six, seven, all the way in the back. All right, run on down here. Now, while he's coming down, remember, all of the booths for different activities, you can win tickets. So make sure that you're making, playing all the different games that we have. Okay, now this one, Pastor, this is a little near and dear to the heart because today I might have had a little too much caffeine today, but uh, that's okay. So we want to help with the caffeine intake of somebody here. Now, Pastor Kenneth is around here. Pastor Kenneth would probably be the best one to, oh, there he is. Do you want to come over here and tell people what this is all about? Because you're like the coffee expert up here. Y'all welcome Pastor Kenneth as he comes. This is just a classic uh, pour over machine, really good. Uh, just get a good grinder to pair with it. Um, so you don't have to mess with, you know, hand pouring if you're not into that. You just want to make coffee, you know, dump the grinds in. This does a really, really good job. Better than your Mr. Coffee, your other drip makers who get a really good cup of coffee. So that's why we got this one. Awesome. And make sure you stop by King's Arms and get you some coffee to go with it, okay? King's Arms is happy. All right. 700, 572. 572. Going once. There he is. All right, run on down here and check that ticket. Very good. Okay, Pastor, we're getting right down to it. But before we do, because I know some of you, how many of you are, you like to write, write things, write, you know, like write things down, pen and paper. So this is an awesome Mont Blanc pen set that comes with a Mont Blanc pen and a wallet. So if you like Mont Blanc pens and wallets, this is gonna be a great set for you. And uh, of course, you can also take it and get, your, get it uh, personalized. 700, one, 
six, seven. 700, one, six, seven. Oh, awesome, come on down. Here you go, Pastor Ryan, and just check that. And now, before we get to the firearms, this is going to be a 64 gig iPad. This is the ninth generation iPad. That, for how many of you are gonna win this one? Okay, three, okay, great, here we go. This one's been specially tracked by the NSA. <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> 700, three, nine, eight. 700, 700, zero, zero, three, nine, eight. Going once. Going twice, 398. Three times, she gone. All right, here we go. Hope that person was not in the bathroom. All right, here we go. 700, 495. 700, 495. 495, is that him coming all the way down? Awesome, very good. All right. All right, Pastor Ronnie Wolt. Now, this is going to be the white tickets. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the shotgun. This is a 12-gauge tactical shot shotgun by Blackwater Firearms. It's called the Century 12. Brand new, still locked up. We won't put it up on, unless you want me to. But uh, two magazines. Man, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Be a great addition to somebody's house. Now, the rules on the firearms is uh, you do have to be 21 years old and you had to have a concealed carry license or at least you had to have a gun license. All right, here we go. How, who's gonna win the shotgun? Now, by the way, just a quick disclaimer on the firearms, Pastor Rodney as well. You will not get this firearm right now. You will have to wait till Friday, which means because we will have one of our vendors will be here where they will run the background check. You will have to go through all the proper paperwork. If you're not willing to do that, please just let us know afterwards, and we'll, then we we'll can move it away to somebody else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll, it'll go to somebody else. Otherwise, you must meet those criteria. But here we go. Three, four, nine. That should be everybody. Zero, two, two. <laughs> oh, Pastor David. Now, fun fact is, Pastor David and I actually got our concealed carry together. So I know along with Pastor Todd, so we know you have it, so very good. So Pastor David, you can pick this up at the end of the week. Keep your ticket. We have that you're the winner. Awesome. All tell, right. Tell us about this one. So this is also, this is an AR-15. AR Let me just give you a little bit of information on it. Just a moment. Probably one of the few churches in America that give away AR-15s. On a regular basis, amen. So this, yeah, this is an AR-15 uh, caliber 223 by PWS. So, but not only that, it's got the hollow sun, a uh, red dot on top of it, plus a magnifier. There's been, there's a bipod on it. There's been some upgrades done to this weapon. So we went through them yesterday, cleaned everything up. They're absolutely beautiful. So this right here is the weapon. I feel testosterone rising in the room. All right, rules apply, here we go. Gotcha, who's got the ticket? The winner, who's got the winning? You, okay, here we go. <laughs> Three, four, nine, zero, six, two. No way, Brandon. <laughs> awesome job. Just match up that ticket, Pastor Ryan. So that awesome car that's here, that's actually Brandon's car he brought to be a part of the conference. So there it is. That's yours. Awesome testimony. So you'll come at the end of the week. We'll get you squared away. And that is how we do it at the men's conference. Amen. Some people do a lot of praying. I can see that. Well, how many are excited to be here? What the Lord's going to do here? Who came hungry to be touched by the Lord? 
Well, get ready tonight. Do not leave before, because I'm going to pray for people. You know, I, the Lord began to speak to me the last number of weeks, and then we started doing our Sunday nights, a special impartation, laying hands on everybody. And I know we'll do that. I was going to pray for people, probably every one of these services, because if you don't get touched by the fire of God, it's really all you're going to do is just carry religion. Something happens when the power of God comes on you and you just step into another dimension. And that's what I've been praying about, that every man coming on this property, by the time you leave here, you're going to be walking in another dimension in every realm, in your marriage, in your home, in your business, in your church, in your ministry, whatever God has assigned for you to do. And that also I've been believing God that people are going to be healed. So I believe people are going to be healed here and set free from everything imaginable. Can you say amen? And uh, great to have everybody come in. I see we have an evangelist that made a lot of money off of my downfall when I was locked up in prison. Great to, <laughs> great to have J.D. show up here, Pastor Tom Lightly. And then just everybody else that's been coming in here, you'll get to meet a lot of the different ones here during the course of this couple of days that we have together. Amen. I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Proverbs. And uh, tonight, before I get into the main message, I want to talk about the righteous man as, as a giver. You know, people ask us, how can you give away all this stuff? I, you know, and really, that was something that was birthed in me years and years ago. I said, Lord, I want to really bless people. And I just like to bless people with things that they would like. Are you with me? It's not even stuff that they would even need. Just something that would just bless them. And I'm not saying it's useless. I'm just saying it's something that's over the top. Because I begin to realize something about God, that God always gives us over the top. He not only supplies our needs, but He also comes and He meets our desires. Are you with me? So I started to purpose in my heart to do that. I did that with my wife. I did that with my children. And my wife would get a little, you know, thing with me. She said, why are you buying that now? It's not their birthday. I said, I can't wait for the birthday. I just got to do it now because I just got to do it. I feel, I feel I'm being attacked by a spirit of giving. And I just, I just need to do this now. And so I just told the Lord, you know, when we, when we had the breakthrough, I told the Lord, if you would help me have a breakthrough, I will go around the world and I'm going to go out of my way. If it's in my power, I'm going to go out of my way to bless people. I'm going to bless as many people as I can. And that's just going to be what I leave on the earth, not just of the anointing that we freely receive because we give that away, but of our natural treasures and what God has entrusted to us. Can you say amen? So let's look at this here in uh, chapter 3. He says here, look, verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Everybody say, favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. How many want to find favor in the sight of God and man? Well, let me tell you right now, you don't have to compromise to do that. You can just do what the Word says and God will honor you. Now, you might get arrested, but the Lord will turn it all around for your favor. Can you say amen? amen? Do you know, if I hadn't got arrested, we wouldn't be sitting in this pavilion tonight. I mean, you think back about it. I mean, there was no reason for us to build a pavilion. But when we made a stand, and then we were standing outside here in the rain, we needed to put a covering over it, and look what the Lord has done. As we were singing that song about, look what the Lord has done, you know, I was just thinking about everything that God is doing here. 
the new balconies that are coming in the sanctuary, the new atrium that's coming up. And I mean, every time you come around here, you're going to see new things. Why? Because God is on the move. You will find favor in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In other words, you could sit and try to work out in your mind what God is going to do and how he's going to do it. And God's going to always come up with something that's going to shock you and surprise you. And when you look back at it, you go, Lord, I knew you were going to do something, but I didn't know you were going to do that. I knew you were going to move, but I didn't know you were going to move in that way. I knew that you were going to come through for me, but you have shocked me. You've blown my mind. How many of you have had the Lord blow your mind? I mean, just when you go, seriously? Are you kidding me? Well, I tell you what, I pray that the remainder of 2022 is going to be like that for you. Regardless of where you live, regardless of what state you find yourself in, because God's Word works wherever you find yourself. Can you say amen? He says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. I tell you, the last three years, I have prayed more for direction for the will of God in my life than at any other time in the history of my whole life of ministry. Lord, I, I'll tell him on a daily basis, I cannot make one step wrong. Lord, you have to tell me. You have to break in on me. I don't care what you need to do. I have to have your will. I need to have your will, and I want your direction and your plan for me. I don't want any decoys. I don't want any sidetracks. I don't want it to run down some rabbit hole. I want your will and your will alone. And that's one of the things I'm praying for every man. By the time you leave here at the conclusion of this conference, when you get back, you're going to step right into the will of God in every area, not just in one area, but in every area of your life. And you're going to see his hand and you're going to see his blessing. Can you say amen? He says, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil, which is something that you have to make a quality decision from that you will not allow leaven in your life or allow any little bit of evil, even if people think it's like a good evil. Some say, what do you mean by that? How many have noticed in the world, people are saying, well, that's not really that bad. I mean, I know that's a lie, but I just had to, to get out of where I was. You know? So people are making excuses for sin they water it down, but even sin diluted is still sin. So we, we've got to hate sin and eschew evil and get it as far away from us in every area. And it starts in thought and then word and then deed. No, no, nothing just goes to deed. Somebody said, well, how did you do that? It all first starts thoughts, then words, then deeds. And it can be hanging around the wrong kind of people, you know. And the enemy always sets people up, puts them around the wrong. For me, I have to watch out not to hang around the wrong kind of preachers. Hello. Come on. Who, they want to tell you, you don't have to have meetings like that all the time. You don't have to have meetings where you pray for people and people get touched by the fire of God and bodies fly through the air. Can't you just have a normal meeting? I looked at them and said, well, I came to your meeting, and it was normal, and I, I would quit the ministry if that was all that was available. Because when the Lord touched me with the fire, there was something that burned on the inside of me. I wanted everyone to experience His touch. I wanted everyone to experience the anointing. And I'll tell you, there's enough anointing for every single person here without robbing anyone else's blessing here this weekend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, yeah, he will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says he'll make fat your bones. 
You know, you, you, if, you, if your marrow is dead, you dead. Are you with me? Marrow is like the sap of a tree. You will sap you. Health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Then he says, honor the Lord with your substance. Righteous men honor God, period. Righteous men will do whatever God says do without arguing. Yeah, I, it, it actually has shocked me to see how many people in the church want to argue. We want to argue. Well, I know the Bible says that, but. I know the scripture says that, but. Well, that's the problem, your big butt. <laughs> Don't argue with the words. And then why do you hang around people that always want to pick it to pieces? God's word is pure. God's word is powerful. God's word is actively alive and energetic. God's word is life. God's word is health. God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our pathway. I'm just going to take everything He says. I'm just going to say it's mine. And I'm going to block my ears to anybody that tries to tell me that that's not for now, that's not for today, that's not relevant now. Excuse me. I'm from Africa. I take the Word of God literally, and I'm just going to believe it from Genesis to Revelation. Can you say amen? And I'm going to honor God according to what the Word of God says do. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits from all your increase. Amen. Now, you notice, and I, I started sharing on this in the church. I know you've been sharing on this on your program. And the, well, the World Economic Forum has decided, and they, of course they've infiltrated into many of the denominations here in America, and they realized that they had to stop the church. Now, I would say that in, what are we, August, September of 2022, I would say they failed in trying to stop the church because they tried to shut us down in 2020. That failed hopelessly. In actual fact, new churches are opening now. New churches are springing up all across America. So whatever they tried failed hopelessly. But they have another insidious plan. And so what they decided is that they wanted to indoctrinate people inside mainstream denominations to come against, number one, come against healing for today, healing for now, because they don't want you running to God to get a miracle. Are you with me? So then what they're going to do is publicize and tell everybody miracles are not for today. God doesn't want to heal you. And that's stop with the lost apostle. That's the first thing. Secondly, they want to demonize tongues. And they want to make out that tongues is of the devil because they don't want people praying in tongues. Because if you pray in tongues, you have access to power that they can't stop. Are you with me? And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you have access straight to the throne, and they don't want you making intercession. They don't want you praying heavenly mysteries. They don't want the church walking in power and anointing. And then they want to, this is all decided. This is what they did. And, and men and leaders from different denominations have been brought into the World Economic Forum, have adopted what they have uh, made as their modus operandi for the next five years, and they've come back to America to now begin to indoctrinate the church to tell them no more tongues, no more healing, and that we should not tithe. You can hear people starting to talk about don't tithe because they don't want the church to have any provision, and they also anti-prosperity. They don't want you to be blessed. Well, you have to be a stupid idiot, not want to be blessed. Any man here wants to be blessed, wants to look after his wife, wants to look after the children, wants to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Are you with me? 
That's why you get up in the morning and you go to work. You go to work, you get a salary. You don't work for nothing. You get a salary. The first thing when you get the job, you're well, what are you going to pay me? First thing. And they say, well, we pay you that. Oh, I don't care about pay. I work for nothing. There's nobody who does that. Everybody wants to be remunerated. And so they don't want the church to be prosperous. They don't want the church to be blessed. Well, let me tell you, the Lord spoke to me years ago to begin to, we start a kingdom business fellowship. You can learn all about it while you're here. And God began to speak to me about speaking I'm talking about to the River Church that we believe in God just in the church alone to raise up 300 millionaires in the church that will fund the harvest. Now, we've got a lot of other River Churches and other churches that are affiliated with us that have adopted the same plan, and we're seeing millionaires pop all across America and even in the foreign fields. Because when you begin to preach the Word of God, it comes into the hearts of the people and begins to explode on the inside of them. And that's one thing I can guarantee you right now, when this conference comes to an end, you're going to leave this conference more prosperous than what you came. You're going to leave this conference at another dimension. When you get back home, you're going to see breakthroughs in the realm of finances like you've never seen before. I'm, I prophesy over you. I speak. Somebody said, how can you tell me this? Because I know what God has assigned to us. I know what the Lord has told us to do. This might offend some people and even some leaders of denominations, but God spoke to me. You need to speak the word over my people. I'm going to raise them up from obscurity, and I'm going to cause them to flourish at a time when others are failing, at a time when others are throwing in the towel. There's a remnant, there's a group of people that God is raising up that will not compromise, that will not bow their knee, that will march through the land and they will accomplish heaven's purpose and plan. You will not just survive, but you will thrive and you will multiply. Are you with me tonight? Now, if you don't like what I'm saying, then you've come to the wrong conference. You better run to the wicked conference. This is the righteous conference. Hallelujah. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost here on this field tonight. You know, when the Lord gave me the theme for the conference, it was a scripture my wife sent to me from Isaiah 3 and verse 10. Say ye to the righteous man, it shall be well with him. My wife texted that to me. It was just that one verse. Say ye to the righteous man, it shall be well with, with him. The Lord said, that's the theme of the conference. Tell all the righteous men, it shall be well with you. That even tonight you might be facing a battle or a storm or up against it, but God will cause miracles to take place while you are here back home. God will be turning situations around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will see the hand of God. You will see the glory of God. You will see the anointing of God begin to move in the realm of provision, supernatural provision. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come here, sir. You. Yes. Quickly. Run here. As I said that, lift your hands. I saw the hand of God. Come on. Fire on you right now. As I was speaking that, I saw the hand of God come on you. And the power of God's coming on people all across this field. Get ready tonight. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. It doesn't matter what the devil said. It doesn't matter what other people have said about you. Bring this young man here. Bring him here. Quickly. Somebody said, I thought you were going to receive an offering. In a little bit. Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He's okay. Trust me, I'm a doctor. He's doing fine. The Lord wants to flood people. I said he wants to flood people with his blessing. 
Tell me, did three people not show up here tonight? Can you bring some three people that would like a seat? Put them in here. There's an empty seat over there. There's an empty seat over there. I hate empty seats. It's like something I detest from the time I started the ministry. Amen. Put a Bible on a seat. Get some bum in there. Amen. I mean, not a bum, you know, a bum. <laughs> but we'll get people saved. Fill those seats too, please, guys. Come on, us it. Wake up. Do your job. See, I should be an usher. <laughs> Seriously, there's two seats over here. There's a seat over there. Get rid of the ghosts. Put some people there. Amen, it looks better. One over here, one over there. Another one over there. Three back over here. Ushers, ushers, where are the ushers? Why don't you take a truck and go to the end of the parking lot and pick some people up? Just bring some people from somewhere near the back and put them in you. <laughs> How long does it take? There's two here on the second row, two seats on the second row. There's another one. There's a third one there. There's another one back here on the third row. One back there. If you find a gap, fill it. Amen. All right, that's better. Looking good now. now three people don't go to the toilet at the same time. Especially men. Three ladies will go to the restroom, but not three men. Well, I need to go. I need to go too. You want to go? Yeah, let's go. Wrong conference. So you see the attack, and I'm watching this thing happen like a train smash. You see this attack happening, and it's to attack the church, to basically immobilize the body of Christ. So God doesn't want to heal you. He doesn't want you blessed financially, and you can't pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, really? Excuse me, why don't you shut up? Why don't you zip it before I shut your mouth for you? You lying devil. I'm going to do what the Bible says do, whether you like it or not. And you can label me what you want to. You can lie about me. They already have. They print all kinds of books. There's stuff all over the internet. They can keep making up stuff. Go ahead. Keep making up stuff. But we are not changing one thing because we know what the Word of God says. Can you say amen? So he says, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase. If you will covenant right now, tonight, that you'll tell the Lord, whatever you give me, I will bring to you a tenth, and I will worship you. And I'm talking about your home church where you fellowship and serve God. I will bring, I promise you, I will put you first. I will honor you. Any man that will make that covenant with God, you will step into another dimension in your life, and you'll never look back. You'll never be the same. If you look back at the turn of the previous century, there were people like Colgate and Woolworth and, and Laterno. I heard about Laterno as a little boy when I was in Africa. He had the big earth-moving equipment, and he was so blessed and made so much money that his tithe was so big that he said, I'm going to live off the tithe and give God the 90. And that's what he did. And I was praying, and I said, Lord, do you think that will happen again? And the Lord said to me, yes, before my coming, I will raise up men 
of the same caliber that will see my glory and supernatural provision will be theirs and I will increase them and multiply them and bless them beyond measure. We are right now in the greatest transference of wealth taking place in the earth today. And if it should happen to anybody, it should happen to God's people, it should happen to the righteous. And I, I want to tell the devil and his crowd out there, you better get ready because the righteous are coming. I said the righteous are coming. God says when you honor him, your bonds will be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst forth with new wine. Hallelujah. Your bonds, your storage places will be filled with plenty. And your vats shall overflow with new wine. And there shall be provision upon your life. Property will come in your hands supernaturally. Vehicles and transportation will come in your hands supernaturally. Companies, new income streams. God can give you a creative idea that impact millions of people. That from now till the early part of 2023, suddenly it explodes. And you see the hand of God. If you promise and tell the Lord, I promise you, I'll never get a big head. I'll always tell people it was you, and I'll always give you the glory, and I'll always honor you. I'll honor you with my first fruits. You say, why, Pastor? Because when you honor him with your first fruits, you're putting him in first place, and you never forget him. You're just saying, I don't forget you today. My wife and I, I mean, we, maybe we pray just simple prayers. I mean, every day. Like, we're going to the bed tonight. The last thing, we're doing, Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings. Thank you. And we start thanking God for little things. Just like little things that you would think that we were stupid even thanking the Lord for. Just like tiny little things. This, I must say, well, surely the Lord's done some big things. He has. But let me tell you, I thank him for every little, tiny, little thing. We just thank him. We wake up in the morning. And she, either she will start praying or I start praying. And then she'll agree or I'll just get in agreement. Father, I just thank you for another day. Thank you for your hand of blessing upon us. Thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for how you blessed us yesterday. Thank you for a new day, what you're going to do today. Thank you for supernatural wisdom. Thank you for direction. Thank you for your provision. We call in all the provision, and then we start praying over all the river members. We pray over the churches that are affiliated with us. We pray for Jonathan. We pray for Tom. We pray for everybody. I pray for my brother. I pray for every minister that I know that comes to my mind just in a flash father bless this one bless this individual raise them up for your glory lord anoint this person god do this over there father give that one a breakthrough lord give them a miracle on that side father they believe in you for this give that to them lord they need a miracle in their body father give them a miracle in their body lord thank you for what you've done thank you for your grace thank you for your goodness and just you just take time and just thank him And then every opportunity that we get to honor him with our first fruits. So, I mean, we, we have some businesses, so we, we have a tithe account that we do from our companies. Personally, we have a tithe. The ministry has a tithe account. So we always, every day, phew, this is going out here. That comes from me personally to somebody. This is coming from the ministry to another ministry. This is coming from our business, you know. And we always just say, a righteous man is a giver. A righteous man is generous. A righteous man is not stingy. A righteous man is not a tightwad. A righteous man looks to be a blessing everywhere they go. A righteous man goes to sleep dreaming of how he's going to get up and be a greater blessing the next day. I can just see this. Many of you are going to get home and you're going to bless your wife. She's going to, you're not even married. Sit down and stop jumping up and down. 
Seriously, try to listen to what I'm preaching about before you jump up. You're not even married. Get a wife. <laughs> he just keeps jumping up. I said, they're going to go and bless their wife. He jumps up. You're not married. This is, from, this is for all the married men. How many married men are here? Listen. Hold your hands in the air. God's going to bless you. Listen. To bless your wife in a way that she's never been blessed before. I can see all the wives at home going, thank you. Yeah. I was talking to your uncle, and they've just had their anniversary, and he said, you know, he wanted to bless his wife. He bought her a ring with diamonds and everything and gave it to her the other day. He said she was so happy. He said, he said, I blessed her with it, and she was so happy. He said, I didn't realize she would be that happy. And then she informed me that she wanted to add some other stones to the, to the wedding ring. <laughs> but he said, I, I never seen her so happy. Just that, because she never expressed, she said, you didn't have to do that, because he, he did go over the top on it and just blessed her, which he needed to, because she put up with him all, all those years. But I just want to say this to all the married men here. God's going to empower you when you get back to be a greater blessing to your wife than you've ever been before. Now, you might say, but well, you know, we, we okay, but marriage is not like it used to be. It's God's going to flip that thing around, and you're going to fall in love all over again. You're going you're gonna to leave here. In actual fact, in actual fact, I, I let you a little secret. Don't let anybody hear this. Why don't you, while you're here at the conference, send your wife some flowers to her, to the home where she's staying, and just put a card and say, I want you to know I love you. Get ready for when I get home. I'm giving you a little tip here right now that'll just send it over. You talk about your stocks and shares in your own life, it will go through the roof, let me tell you right now. Wall Street might fail, but you'll never fail. How many will take some advice that I'm giving you here? Yeah, between now and tomorrow morning, just make sure flowers are delivered to her. With a little note. That'll start. Every flowers. If you can't do flowers, then I'll pray for you. He says, your bonds will be filled with plenty and your pressure shall burst with new wine. So, I want you to say this off to me, first fruits. Now, why first fruits? Because they're the very first thing that arrives. It's the first that's being produced. When you honor God with your first fruits, then you believe in him that second and third and fourth and fifth fruits are coming. Are you with me? I got chickens, and so we got eggs, so I bring first fruits of those. My cows are going to, you know, calf, so I'm going to have a first fruit from that. I got sheep that are going to get pregnant, I'm going to have first fruits from that. So I, that's actually the first time I'm actually going to have a first fruit in the original meaning of the first fruit, like a first lamb, a first cow. Are you with me? Which we will assign that. I'll call, the, I'll call the cow. His name shall be called Tithe. <laughs> and somebody else will eat him. You know, he'll be a blessing. Somebody said, this Tithe multiplied. Pastor, it multiplied in me. <laughs> Who likes steak? I 
I'm not going to take too long with this tonight, but just to say this to you. There have been times when the Lord has blessed me and I said, oh Lord, what? What did you do that for? And he said, because you honored me over there, you blessed me over there. I've watched all of that, son. Because when God blesses you, he overwhelms you. Do you know how much he loves you tonight? Do you know how much he loves you? He loves you so much. There were two things that I felt that morning at 10 minutes past two, when the fire came into my room on March the 17th, was the overwhelming love that God has for his people. I felt that. From that moment, I said, Lord, would you let me love your people the way you love them? I felt that. And then I felt that in that presence, the glory of God was everything that we need that we would never lack. You would never lack in his presence. That there was no shortage. That whatever you need, that whatever you needed, he would get to you. Whatever you needed. If you honored him, then he'll watch over you and he'll honor you. That if you need it, he will get it for you. John 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and shall be done for you. One translation says, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. If I don't have it, I'll make it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the gift of faith here tonight. The gift of faith is coming upon men on this field tonight, and even you at your homes. I know I prayed for two people, but you can receive right in your seats. I don't have to call you out to pray over you. I mean, I'm going to lay hands on people here tonight, but I'll just tell you this. You can receive right where you are and say, yes, Lord, I believe. And if you open your heart, God will come and he will touch you. Men that will step into another dimension of the supernatural and you'll see the provision of God in every area of your life, in the daily things, in the little things. Things that you might think are ridiculous. Surely the Lord is not going to be even interested in that, but he is. He's interested in all those things. I know there's people upset because we gave away some guns. And they say the Lord wouldn't even, God doesn't like guns. He sure does because he's given me a whole bunch of them. He loves 45s. They keep coming in. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So come tell me God doesn't. He does. Somebody said, why would God even do that for me? Because the Lord wants to make you a sign and a wonder. Amen. So when people look at you, they say, what in the world has happened to that individual? Just come here, Pastor Daniel. Bring me that microphone. Where's Flash? Flash was faster. Okay, yes, Pastor Daniel. Now, how many people have been saved this year through what God's doing with you? So we just broke, uh, three days ago, we broke 25,000 in America. Glory to God. 
That was our goal for this year, but we broke it already. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We started back in June and summer mission trips all across America. We've hit 14 states since June, over 11,000 people. We've got a team in Tallahassee right now. We have a goal. We started Friday. We have a goal by this Saturday to lead 3,000 people to the Lord right here in the capital of the state of Florida. Amen. And we are over 2,400 already on the streets and numbers are coming in tonight. Glory to God. So we've just been nonstop all summer long, city after city, whether it be a rural town of America or a big city, right after we got the great victory of Roe versus Wade, the next morning I got up and the Lord immediately put in my heart to hit all five of the capitals on the Gulf Coast. So, so amen. We hit Montgomery, Alabama first. Montgomery, Alabama, we were in there five days. Montgomery, Alabama, we led 1,285 people to the Lord right there at the state capitol in Alabama. Glory to God. We hit Baton Rouge, Louisiana, led over, I think, 1,300 people to the Lord in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Went to Jackson, Mississippi, and well over 1,000 in Jackson, Mississippi. We're currently in Tallahassee, Florida, and then next week we'll be in Austin, Texas. We'll hit all five of the capitals on the Gulf Coast. Come on, somebody. So the Lord put me central there on the Gulf Coast. I have a farm in Loosedale, Mississippi, and since we're right there, the Lord put in my heart not to be a, a, a prideful thing, if you will, but to show the body of Christ that it could be done, that from Tallahassee, Florida, all the way to Brownsville, Texas, that we would be the largest soul winning ministry on the Gulf Coast just to prove that it could be done. And in six years, this, this tonight is six years. Tonight, we will break 169,000, leading 169,000 people to Jesus in the United States of America tonight in Tallahassee, Florida. So that's what's going on, Pastor. Now, Glory to God. I see there's a very big boat out there. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, that big boat fits well in the big pavilion <laughs> with the big ass fans and the yes, big sir. ass heaters and whatever. But, you know, here you are, God called to the ministry, but you have other talents. You're a hunter, you're a fisherman. So tell the people, for those that don't know, what happened with that boat because you also got some amazing things are going to give away uh, during the course of the conference. But I'm just want to show, well, I want them to see how, because you honor God, how God's honoring you with something that was your deepest desire, which was to catch fish. I mean, you catch fish in the spirit, but you catch fish in the natural, and you're good at both. So tell them what happened with the natural. So over 20 years ago, I had this vision that one day that I would fish and I would fish competitively and I would be completely fully sponsored but it wouldn't be by the industry I saw this 20 years ago but it would be the body of Christ would rally around us and we would go into this world of of fishing and hunting and we would reach the people with the gospel so I, when I got called to the full-time ministry and the Lord called me to the full-time ministry I put it all off on the side and it's flat after and it's one of the I just flat went after God, went after the things of God. Speed time up. I come to Tampa, Florida here and pat with Pastor Rodney, and Pastor Rodney gives me a scholarship to Bible school in 2008, and Shelly and I move, and I'm, at that time I had been sponsored by my very first company. I was sponsored by Gator Tracks Boat and had a Gator Tracks boat, a really nice um, hunting boat. And I got here, and Brother Phil saw the boat, and he said, man, we could use boats like that to run missionaries, which they should still use this boat today in, in Africa to run missionary organizations up and down the Zambezi, Muslim missionary trips. And I took that boat, the keys that were in my hand, man, my very first sponsored boat, I took the keys that were in my hands, and I, I said, man, here, Brother Phil, this is your boat. He looked at me like, what? I said, it's your boat. You mean I've got something that can be used to win people in Jesus in a place where I can't go? Wow. Time passes by. That was 2009, 2009, and then last, or 
2020. In 2020, here's what it, the beginning of this thing that happened in me what Pastor Rodney said. He said, God loves you. In January of 2020, in early January, I had the revelation that God loved me. Which is what we're praying that every one of you have. Yeah, that's why you're here. I'm studying the Word of God, and it's one thing for me to travel America and tell thousands and thousands of people that God loves them, but when you got revelation that God loves you, the Lord showed me that He loved me. I came to camp meeting 2020, and I'm struggling with this going fishing again. I'm busy. I got things going on, and we're... And the Lord's dealing with me, will you go fishing? And I'm in a conference in January of 2020, just like we're in a conference right here in winter camp meeting, and Pastor Rodney gives a consecration altar call. And I answer the consecration altar call, and the reason why I answer because I'm dealing with, are you going to go fishing? Well, how can you, like, go fishing? The Lord's telling me go fishing. I answer the altar call, and I turn, and the first person that says anything to me with Jimmy Pierce, Jimmy Pierce looked at me and said, Hey, Brother Daniel, you've been catching in them largemouth bass lately? No idea what I'm dealing with at this altar about saying, Yes, Lord, I will go back into the tournament world and start fishing in the tournament world. Within 45 days, I was in an $80,000 bass boat. I was sponsored by a major rod or company, and I had thousands of dollars of sponsors behind me in 45 days. Bam, just like that. The Lord did it, and He's continuing to do it. The next year, our sponsorship base increased. The, the following year, we got to win a new boat. We're in a new boat every single year. And this year, I'm in the brand new Phoenix 9 uh, 20 Elite 2. We're in a new boat every single year. And the cool thing is, man, I'll get out there and I'll be fishing. I'll be pre-fishing for these tournaments, and I'm currently in tenth place in one of the most most competitive. Uh, tournament trails in America, one of the most difficult regions to fish in America. There were 250 competitors, and I'm sitting in the 10th place with two more tournaments going on. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Are you, I'll be are, out there. Are you, are you in 10th place right now? I'm currently in 10th, sitting in the 10th. How many? Tenth. How many teams are out there? Over there's over 250 competitors, and you in 10th place, and I'm sitting in 10th. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm fishing against guys with 30 and 40 years of experience. I've been away from this thing for a long time and having to figure these waters out and figure these hundreds of miles of waterways, and it's amazing. Here's the deal. Yeah. I'm out pre-fishing, and all of a sudden, I'm fishing in my wild live wells, and I'm catching fish in my live wells. I'm loading my live wells down with fish. And I know every time it happens, how come I'm loading live wells down with fish? I'm about to meet somebody on this river that don't know Jesus. The Lord loads my live wells down with fish. I'm looking, I pulled up people, and I'm, I'm catching all these fish. My live wells are loaded with largemouth bass. I said, pulled up to some guys. All the time happens. I said, hey, y'all catching any fish? Man, we only had two bites all day. I said, I got 50 in my live wells. I said, my live wells are loaded. I said, pull your boat up on over here. They pulled the boat up, and I start telling them about Jesus. There's pictures that people got. Men raising their hands. These burly guys raising their hand, getting saved. Glory to God, because God loved me so much, he loaded my life well down with me. So here's someone that had a desire, but he honored God. And now the Lord's honored him, and he's doing both. He's still reaching the harvest and reaching the harvest in an area that I couldn't because I'd have no access into that realm. And God's using him in a powerful way. So you sure want to go check out his boat? And I know you've got some yes. things to give away yes, during the course of this. Yes, sir. Episode. We have, um, glory to God. Whoa, did you, whoa, 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 whoa. He catches fish like that. Fish actually jump in his boat.
Let me ask a question. How many of you have a desire, just like maybe he had a desire, you have a deep desire that you have not seen come to pass as of yet? Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. Then let this conference, let this righteous conference be the launching pad for the release of that desire, that deep desire that maybe nobody else knows about, but that will come to fruition coming out of this men's conference. Can you say amen? And that we'll hear the testimonies in the weeks and months and years. There'll be many just like him that God will raise up and through your life. There will be great influence and multitudes will come into the kingdom of heaven because a righteous man gives, a righteous man honors God, a righteous man wins souls, and a righteous man is blessed by God in everything that he does. Hallelujah. 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 How many need you to hear this tonight? Say this off me, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in every realm. I'm blessed, every realm. I'm blessed personally. I'm blessed, I'm blessed spiritually. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in my business. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in my family. I'm blessed, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And I'm blessed going out. Blessed, I'm blessed. Just lift your hands and begin to thank the Lord for that even now. Come on, I want to hear a noise. Just thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just see I just see walls being broken down right now. I just see impossibilities being removed right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs on every side. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed tonight. Ashes, if you just come, hand out the offering envelopes, do what the Lord tells you to do, and honor him tonight for his goodness and grace. Make a covenant with him. Tell him, Lord, I won't ever forget you. You that are watching by way of television, Pastor Eric, if you'll just come and give instruction. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord what he'd have you do as the ushers hand out the envelopes. Make your checks out to RMI. You can also give by credit card if you choose. Do what he's telling you to do. Also, for everybody watching around the world, this is your time to sow. As we take the time to bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord and worship the Lord in our giving, you do it in your home. Go to Revival.com. Revival.com. Click Invest Now. Do what he's telling you to do. And then also several other ways to sow seed. One is through your cell phone, push pay or text message giving. Text 77977-GIVE-RMI. You can also th give through Cash App, which is dollar sign Revival Ministries. In the memo, please put your first and last name. We'd appreciate that. And then also if you're watching live on Rodney and Adonica Howard Brown Facebook, 
Of course, you can get all the directions there. If you're watching live on Rodney Howard Brown YouTube channel, you can give through Super Chat, many different ways to sow seed. Maybe the Lord's speaking to you about sending a check in to lose something and send it in. Do that. Do something substantial. You see everything we're doing here with the building and all the other things? Then you can make out a check to RMI or the River Church P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. They'll put that up several times for you. So do what the Lord is telling you to do. If we missed you on this great river pavilion with an envelope, raise your hand, and we'll get you one. Raise your hand, and we'll get you an envelope. We'll give everybody a few moments to get your offerings ready. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just believe God's speaking to several men here tonight to go to another level. Many lives depend upon it. People don't realize that. You know, if I hadn't had this breakthrough in my own life all those years ago, we would none of us would be sitting here today. If the Lord hadn't come and touched me like he did in Africa, we would, none of us would be here. Wouldn't, wouldn't be here. This place wouldn't be here. Not that it's all about me. I'm just talking about this setting. And there'll be settings that will take place around you that if God has his way with you and does what he's going to do, multitudes are going to be touched in the days and weeks and months to come. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for increase and multiplication. We expect the miraculous. We expect to increase in Jesus' name, and we even expect it this week. We thank you for supernatural blessings from heaven in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, say amen. Ushers, go ahead.
be seated. Just plug in. Don't miss out on what the Lord's doing every morning at 9.30 and then all the activities in the field in the afternoon and then tomorrow night 7 and the same with Friday and then Saturday. We'll have a great morning service. We've got a big lunch in here with barbecue on the field and then everything breaks up until next year. Take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 10. The title of what I'm going to share with you here tonight says, The Righteous Man Speaks. Everybody say this off to me. The Righteous Man Speaks. How many know the wicked speak? And their speech is very distinct, but the righteous man speaks. Let's just read what the scripture says, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, because he's talking about Israel rejecting Christ, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Moses describes 
describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, and shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now go back and just look at verse 8. But what say that the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth? and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, when you listen to people speak, you can actually begin to locate where they are at. Righteous people speak a certain way. Unrighteous people or wicked people speak another way. Religious people have a double speak. They'll speak like a righteous person, but really in reality, they live like an unrighteous person, and therefore unrighteousness comes flowing out of them like a river. But a righteous individual is one who's in right standing with God. And you can hear the excuses made. People say, Pastor, I want to be holy. I'd like to live holy, but you can't live, really live a holy life. And that's what even ministers are telling people. You can't really live a holy life. That's not even true. You can live a holy life and you can live a pure life if you allow God to do a work on the inside of you. Righteousness is not, is not something that we earn or that we work towards where the Lord said, look how righteous they are. Righteousness is something that he has made us. Can you say amen? And it's all by faith where he points as it were, a scepter of righteousness at us and declares that we are righteous. When we meet the guidelines, somebody said, what are the guidelines? Confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. Amen. You cannot earn this, it's free. You can't even bring bags of money to pay for it. It's already been paid for at Calvary. So when you look at many people, their biggest desire is, well, if I can just get, you know, if I can just be in right standing with God, well, that's the very reason why Jesus came and went to Calvary so that you could be in right standing with God. If you could do anything in the natural to make yourself be in right standing with God, why would Jesus come? Then you would make the cross of Christ redundant. It's not by our earning it. It's by our coming humbly and receiving what he has already purchased for us 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. Did we deserve salvation? No. We deserved death. We deserved hell. But he had mercy on us, and his grace was extended towards us. That when we hear this good news, when we hear this glad tidings, when we hear the glad tidings of great joy, that we just want to respond to him because we've received the divine grace. And when we receive the divine grace, we want to repent. We say, I don't want to live like that anymore. One, the, one touch from his hand, one touch from the hand of the master, and everything changes. You just leave everything and follow him. I'm following him. I'm going to follow him all the days of my life. The things you used to do and took pleasure in them, suddenly you don't want to do them anymore, and they revolt you. You can't even, if you look back to your past life, when you lived in sin, you can't even correlate the two. You can't even think, 
Was that even me? We even thought like that. We even lived like that. We even did that and I thought we were happy. Most of the time we had to get drunk or high. Hello. These people with huge decades, gaps missing in their life, they can't even remember it. But then suddenly, suddenly on that day, boom, a total transformation took place. Even that your friends and loved ones, look, come on, what are, you, what are you doing now? That's not you. And you say, oh yeah, this is me. This is the new me because Jesus came on the inside and he changed my life and I'm different. Even your language changed. Even the way you used to speak, you don't speak anymore. The way you used to think, you don't think anymore. No one even said anything to you. You just let it all go. Because people in the world say, well, if I give my life to the Lord, I'm going to have to give up this, give up this, give up that, give up. But they haven't really seen Jesus. But the time they see Jesus, they say, you can have everything. I want you. I want you. I want you in my life. So I want to declare to you that, because he said, let them that are righteous be even more righteous. Are you with me? That you're going to come out of this conference even more righteous than what you came here. Some of you are getting more righteous just sitting here. Therefore, your whole speech is going to be different because a righteous man speaks. And when he speaks, life comes forth from his mouth. Righteous men have the ability to go into any place and it look like death and begin to speak. And when they speak, circumstances begin to change just by their presence and just by their declaration. Do you realize the power that has been given to the righteous? And it doesn't take that many, just one. Just one righteous individual. One person who is in right standing with God. The scripture is plain when it says, those that know their God will do exploits in his name. Exploits. Exploits. I love saying this. Some people don't even do exploits. He said, you'll do exploits. God's called you to do exploits. He's called every single one of you to do exploits. Some said, I've come to the conference. Isn't that enough? Coming to the conference is not an exploit. Are you with me? Coming to the conference is just coming to fellowship and come and get under the spout where the glory comes out and get the word in you and then go back from here. When you leave here, that's when the exploits begin to take place. And people begin to look at you and say, what happened to you? Where have you been? Who have you been around? Boy, you came back different. You came back, you look different. You walk different. You talk different. You're not the same person that we knew. When you speak you speak as someone that has authority. Hallelujah. And a boldness. A righteous person has a boldness about them. Because the Bible says the wicked flee when no man even chases. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Hallelujah. I tell you, you're going to get bolder. Just sitting here. On this field, you're going to get bolder. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I didn't say bolder. I said bolder. See, people get afraid. 
and they want to attack a righteous individual because when you know who you are in Christ, then you know the assignment that's been given to you and you know the boldness that's been given to you and you're not going to back down and they'll come to intimidate. Who do you think you are? Seriously, you can't talk like that. Oh yes, I can because that's how a righteous person speaks and I'm not backing down. I will not back down and I'm not going to compromise just so I can make you think that I like your opinion. Someone said, calm down, tone it down. No, I'm going to turn it up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say this off to me, the righteous are bold like a lion. And a lion speaks. Yeah, it, it roars. <laughs> I tell you what. Oh, yeah, I'm from Africa. A lion roars. When you stand and that lion is just off to the side, everything vibrates. You don't have to wonder what that is. And it can be three miles away, you can feel it. You can feel the rumble of the roar and not feel there's a rumble of a roar sitting here on this field. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, but when you get home, your wife's going to see that you're righteous. Your children are going to see that you're righteous. Your friends and family and loved ones are going to see that you're righteous. A righteous man speaks. Not only does a righteous man speak his desire, but a righteous man speaks the desire of Almighty God to be made manifest in the realm everywhere he goes. Whenever he sees things that are not in line, he begins to speak the will of God into that realm. There will be opposition. There always is going to be opposition. You just have to read through Scripture and you'll see how righteous men from Genesis to Revelation never compromised, found themselves in prison found themselves beaten, threatened. All of that might come to pass, but you see the deliverance of God, how God delivered them out of every predicament that they found themselves in. Even though righteous men fall several times, he will stand up again. And I'm not, I'm not talking by deliverance, by deliberate decision to fall. I'm talking by going along Who's ever been walking along and you stumble and fall? I mean, just walking. Nobody wants to be honest, yeah. But you walk along if you've ever fallen or lost your balance, just in the natural. There are times when you walk along and the attack has been so vehement against you, the storm has been so great around that you stumbled and even almost toppled, but the Lord was there to hold you and to sustain you and to keep you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to know tonight that the Lord has you. He has you in the palm of his hand. And he's not going to let you go. I don't care what the devil has planned for you. The plan of the enemy over your life is negated tonight. It is nullified. It is broken. Every assignment of the wicked against your life is nullified and broken by the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. A righteous man speaks even when things look the opposite. A 
a righteous man calls those things that be not as though they are. A righteous man can go into a place where there is a drought and stand and say, it's going to rain. It is going to rain. Righteous men break droughts. Sitting on this field are major drought breakers. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a drought breaker. That's why the devil's afraid. I said, that's why he's afraid. He's a nervous wreck. There come the righteous. What are they going to do? They're going to cause trouble. Yeah, if you could just shut them out. They're always talking big. They're going to tell you what God's going to do. The religious hate it. Ah, God, he'll never do that. Oh, really? Watch this. It's not, you're not bragging on yourself when you speak like that. You're bragging on him. How great he is. How awesome he is. How wonderful he is. How majestic he is. Hallelujah. See, the devil's got his plan. Of, he, he wants to tell you, oh, you won't make it. You're going to fail. Your life will be cut short. If calamity is going to happen to anybody, it's going to happen to you. You know, it runs in your family. And then the family members will come to tell you the exact same thing. But when the word that's on the inside of you, the word of faith, comes on the inside of you because you believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth when you begin to speak out the word of God then that begins to be made manifest right in front of your eyes and you walk into the dark places and the light begins to shine the Bible says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree a palm tree has an ability to grow up in a desert place where nothing else can grow an oasis can spring up a righteous person is like an oasis where many shall come and get refreshed and get replenished. I know he's jumping. You know it's a great miracle when Tom Lively starts jumping. Don't worry, it's early in the men's conference. We'll get him here before it's long. <laughs> Trying to hold himself together. He's got a reputation to keep his pastor of a mega church now. <laughs> Don't want to be seen on television just jumping up and down. <laughs> I'm teasing. You know that. Righteous people don't go with the flow of the world. They swim upstream. They go against the grain. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Any dead fish could float downstream. It takes a real live salmon to go upstream and go to the spawning ground when new life comes forth. Hallelujah. Say this off to me, I'm not a dead fish. I'm alive. I have the very life of God on the inside of me. I'm a righteous man. It's been told of me. It shall be well with me. Therefore, if it is well with me, 
It shall be well everywhere I go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shout this out, say, the righteous speak. The righteous man speaks. Let me do this right now. I felt this was a good way to open this conference, and then I'm going to pray for people here tonight. I want you to open to page 14 in your newspaper. If you don't have one, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. You were supposed to get one the moment you walked in the door. If you don't get one, it means you didn't pay attention when you walked in here as they were handing out newspapers because you felt you were above and didn't want to get a paper. The paper's important. It tells you where things are on the field and where you need to go and what you need to do. I need another one over here, guys. Page 14 says confessions of a righteous man. The first one is for righteous singles. So we'll start with you because I want everybody to be included here today. I don't want anybody left out. How many singles do we have here? I know everybody was asking me, Pastor, can we do a singles conference? I said, I, I don't think the Lord has led us to do that. But let me just start with Romans 4 and verse 17. Say this together with me. As it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, which is what a righteous person does. So let's, all the righteous singles say this. I am a man after God's own heart. And I humble myself before him. I love God's word and willing to submit to it. I honor, obey, and unashamedly worship him alone. I'm heaven's ambassador. And I bring honor to God in every aspect and activity of my daily life. I represent the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere I go. I steward and protect the call of God on my life, surrounding myself with godly wisdom and counsel and submitting myself to godly spiritual leadership and authority. I live free of fear, worry, and unbelief. The Lord protects me and provides for me because I trust him enough to obey his word. Therefore, I'm not anxious for anything. I'm confident heaven's purpose and plan for my life will be made manifest. I'm a man of integrity. I'm good-natured, kind-hearted, wise, fearless, and strong in character. I'm temperate, disciplined, and exercise self-control. I'm chosen, treasured, and loved in the sight of God. I'm the apple of his eye and blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, lack, or even be in need. I'm blessed to be a blessing to others. A godly caution and marriage 
is my portion in the name of Jesus. According to Proverbs 19 and verse 14, the Lord will provide a wise, understanding, and prudent wife whom I will love as Christ loves the church. Now, for all the righteous husbands, I was created, ordained, and anointed by God to be the head, the priest, and the prophet of my home. I'm submitted to God as I lovingly lead my wife and family by obeying God's Word and the Holy Spirit. I'm a man of one wife. I'm in covenant with God to intentionally love, honor, and remain wholly faithful to my wife alone. I love my wife as Christ loves the church, and I'm willing to give my life for her. As I love my wife, as Christ loves the church, I can pray effectively, knowing that my prayers will not be hindered or cut off. I intelligently recognize our marriage union. I honor my wife as physically the weaker. However, I realize that spiritually we are equals. We're both joint heirs of the grace of life and the unmerited favor of God. I'm patient and kind towards my wife. I'm sensitive to her needs and desires. I'm never harsh, bitter, or resentful towards her. I humble myself to be compassionate, courteous, and tender-hearted towards her at all times. I belong to my wife, and she belongs to me. My body belongs to my wife, and my wife's body belongs to me. I make it a priority to please and to bless my wife, to meet her needs. My earnest desire is to please her. My wife is my grace gift and good thing. She is the evidence of God's favor on my life. Daily I will thank God for giving her to me. She is my best friend and a blessing to my life. Thank you, Lord, for my wife. I carefully protect my wife from the things and people that would bring strife and or division into our home. I do not seek to magnify my wife's faults, but rather I look for her qualities, strengths, and focus on all the good. Every day, I look for opportunities to affirm my wife with genuine, kind, and loving words of affirmation that encourage and build her up. Every day, I tell my wife how much I love her and think she is the greatest. All right, now for righteous dads. This is for all the dads who got children, all right? My children are a blessing from God, and I take full responsibility to shape their future. The devil will not have my children. I will raise them to serve God and have a clear conscience before the Lord so that they can come boldly into God's presence. I'm God's representative to my children. God loves us unconditionally, and I love my children the same. My children know that my love for them isn't dependent on what they say or do, but it's rooted in God's Word and love. I protect my children, keeping careful watch over what they see, hear, and speak. They're friends and associates. I discipline, train, and instruct my children 
according to God's word and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I never correct or discipline my children in anger, but rather in spirit of love and humility, bringing them to a place of repentance and restoration. My children are obedient, respectful, full of wisdom. They love the word, they honor their father and mother, and I will not be ashamed of them when they are grown. God's mercy, grace, and blessing are poured out on those who keep his covenant upon the generations to follow. Therefore, I teach my children to keep covenant with God by raising them with a strong foundation and understanding of God's word, his covenant of peace with them and how much he incredibly loves them. No weapon formed by my children's spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being will prosper. The Lord's hand is upon their life to protect and preserve them for heaven's purpose and plan for their lives. My children know that their identity, worth, and value come from God's word and not from the ways of the world. They are rooted and grounded in biblical truth and walk in unwavering faith and obedience to God's word. Lord, thank you for blessing me with beautiful, smart, gifted, talented children who seek first your kingdom and your righteousness in all they do. My children are soul winners, kingdom fruit producers, and world changers. Hallelujah. Now just thank him. Just lift your hands and begin to thank him on that that we've just spoken out because a righteous man speaks and declares these things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. A righteous man is a holy man. This past week, we were in the city of Dallas and Fort Worth, and we did Monday night, Tuesday. Monday night was at Crowley with Heritage of Faith Church, which is started by Dr. Jerry Savell. And then Tuesday, we were in north, just north of Irving, California. Wednesday, we were over in Rowlett, Pastor Hankins. And then Thursday night, we, we used the ballroom of the Omni Nine, over 900 people showed up. I mean, people are so hungry for God. And many of these meetings were pulled off with 72 hours notice, you know, some seven days notice. Some we signed the contract four days before we had the meeting. But on Monday night, we were over at Heritage of Faith, and I'd really prayed, you know, Brother Joe Sabell and his wife Carolyn had been a blessing to Donick and myself back in 1982 when they'd come to Southern Africa and a message that he preached that had totally revolutionized our life. And last year we were privileged to be able to bring them here and bless them and just tell them how much we loved them. And so we went to where their church is and we had a meeting. They're building a new sanctuary and he, wanted, he said to me, I want you to come do three days meetings when we build the new building, see it about 12, 1500. And uh, their building only seated like 350. We jammed like 580 people in three overflow rooms. And one of the things I prayed about, I said, Lord, I pray that you would let me bless them with something that money could not buy because they have everything. And of course, when I arrived, they were, he introduced me to the three grandchildren and well, three of them that were there. And I, when I saw that, I said, that's it. I know exactly what God's going to do here. Yeah, and the Lord, by the end of the night, took the three grandchildren and just shook them. I mean, the power of God hit them. I mean, after midnight, they were still shaking. And they contacted me and said, you don't know what you've done. You know, you've, you've given us what money couldn't even buy, which is what I prayed for and cried out for. But he was telling me that he just, two weeks ago, 
He had been out with the whole tribe in Arizona. He'd been going to this tribe for 52 years now. He's part Cherokee. And he'd been preaching to this tribe for 52 years, and they wanted to honor him and basically, like, adopt him in, and they dressed him in this blanket, and they gave him a name. And when he told me what the name, they, they said, look, we've watched you for 52 years and we give you a name, and the name they gave him is He Who Walks Holy. He Who Walks Holy. Now, when people have watched you for 52 years, and that's what they come up with, when they're going to give you a name, and that name they give you is He Who Walks Holy. When I heard that, I actually just wept, you know. I said, let it be said of all these men that come to this conference, He Who Walks Holy. You see, a person who's a right standing with God is a person that's a holy person. That doesn't mean to say that you haven't worked through some problems or troubles or some trials or situations, but you don't stay in that position because he's touching you and changing you from glory unto glory. So not only will you walk out of this conference as a righteous person, but as someone that walks holy before God. Then let it be said of your life, they were holy. It was, they were holy. When you go home to be with the Lord, say, he was a holy person. They were a holy person. Their heart was pure before God. How many that would be your greatest desire? So one of the things that would be great if before you left this conference that you left everything that was holding you back, you left it here. Somebody said, what are you going to do with it? Burn it. It just means you get on the plane or get in your car and head out of here and you don't take it with you. Are you with me? And maybe Friday night, we could put up a big, you know, and we're going to burn your junk. We'll put a big fire pit over here. You can write down whatever's bugging you and whatever. We're going to burn the junk, and we're going to stick you in the tank. Yeah. So when you, when, you leave, when you leave this conference, it's gone. Are you with me? There's a cutoff point for you. Because I believe God needs people like this. I believe that tonight and, and tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, this is, gonna, this is life changing. This is life altering. In, in the realm of the spirit, you're going to another whole different dimension. There are men that are here tonight. You love God, you're righteous, you are holy, but you're in limbo. You're not active. God wants to activate you coming out of this week. The Lord didn't make you to be a church attendee. God made you to be an active individual in the kingdom of heaven. And, that, and by that, I don't mean that you just hang out with believers and talk believer stuff. I'm talking about that you are salt and light and that God uses you to influence and bring about a transformation everywhere you go. Every single man on this field tonight, whether you realize it or not, you're an influencer. You're going to influence people around you everywhere you go on a daily basis, on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, on a Saturday, on a Sunday. When they look at you, they're going to see Jesus. They're going to hear Jesus in your voice. They're going to feel Jesus in your touch. And they're going to want to be just like him. That doesn't mean to say you've arrived. We're on this journey. And we're not on the journey by ourselves. We're taking people with us. And not about you. I want to take as many people with me before I leave this earth. 
Can you say amen? So tonight, before we pray, before I lay hands on people here tonight, and the fire of God's going to touch many people here tonight. You can mark that down. I want you to just close your eyes, bow your heads for a moment. And I want you to look into your own heart. Because this Wednesday night is a good place to say, yes, Lord, let me move this. Let me move whatever's holding me back out of the way tonight so I can get on with business. Not wait until Thursday or Friday. And I'm also talking to those that are watching by way of television. We're going into hundreds of millions of homes around the world right now. And even those that will watch on the rerun. While well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe a friend brought you here tonight and you've never ever given your life to Jesus. I want to give you an invitation to accept him tonight, to say, Lord, would you come into my heart? Forgive me of my sin. You that are watching in your homes, what would happen if tonight was your last night on the earth? You put your head on your pillow in the middle of the night, you just past. Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Tonight he calls you. He says, come. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Will you come? Will you surrender to him today? You might never have another opportunity. This very night, your life could be required of you. Tonight, he calls you. Will you say, yes, Lord? He loves you. He stands with arms wide open. He says, come unto me, all you that labor in the heaven laden. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He calls you. Tonight is your night. Will you surrender to him? Maybe you're sitting here. You're watching in your homes, and you say, I gave my life to the Lord in days gone by, but I've grown cold. I'm not serving God like I should. I've allowed the things of the world to come in. I've lost my first love, that peace, that joy that I once had. But tonight, I want to come back. I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Let him come and do what he wants to do on the inside of you. Maybe it's something hidden that no one can see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things that clock the heart of man, that you say, tonight, I want it gone. I want it gone for me. Maybe it's something outward that all can see. And so you even say to yourself, what, what's the use? Everybody knows what I've done. I'm just a big mess. But I want you to know God's a God of a second chance and a new beginning. Will you surrender afresh to him today and say, yes, Lord. He loves you and he calls you and he says, come. Maybe it's not hidden or outward as we described. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world, that knocked your feet out from underneath you, knocked the wind out of your sails. But you say tonight, I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus. Tonight is a night of a new beginning for me. He loves you. And then lastly, maybe you're here on the field today or you're watching in your homes and you say, Pastor, I love the Lord with all my heart, but I don't have the assurance. I don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm a child of God, but I want to know that I know that I know that I'm a child of God. I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt with all assurance. Would you pray for me? If you fit into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you right where you are. Quickly, put your hand up and say, pray for me. All across the field, raise it up high. Today's your day. 
I want those that have your hand in the air to just stand right where you are. Quickly stand, 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 stand. Everyone with your hand in the air. Yes. All across the field. Now I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to others right where you are. Your heart is pounding away. God's talking to you right now. Will you, will you right now say yes, Lord? If that's you, quickly stand with those that are standing and say yes, include me, include me quickly, quickly, quickly to your feet, to your feet right now, to your feet. Go ahead all across the field. I'm going to ask you to make your way down the aisles and come stand all over you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Come tonight. Come. Come. Standing here are three categories, those that have come for the first time tonight, then those that have come to recommit your life, and then those that have come to make sure. If you mean business with God tonight, God means business with you. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. So I want you to close your eyes right now and just raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And pray this together with me right now. And believe it in your heart. And say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you. In the precious name. Of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word. If I confess. With my mouth. Jesus. Is my Lord. And my Savior. And I believe in my heart. That God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Change me. Set me free. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, 
by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now just lift both hands and just thank him right now. Father, I pray over every one of them right now. I break every bondage, every addiction, everything of hell. I break it off of you and I set you free by the power of the blood of Jesus right now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And from this very night, you'll never be the same. For there are even those that stand here this night and said, Lord, can we live a pure life? Can we be holy? And the Lord would say, yes, you can. And even now, those things are broken by the power of the blood. And you're being set free. Every curse, every demonic force is broken. Broken by the power of the blood. Off of you now. I pull it out by the roots. We break it now. And Lord, do a work deep in their heart even now. And seal them now by your spirit. That on that day, not one will be missing. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Just lift those hands and begin to thank him right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Savior. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for breakthrough upon breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. Totally free. Totally free. From this night. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same from this night. Never the same. Thank you, Lord. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same from this very night. Changed. Transformed. Renewed. Revived. Father, we thank you for it. Now, Lord, fill them with your joy. That's one thing we have much of here. Fill them with your joy. Lord, they need your joy. Fill them with your joy. Fill them with your joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Fill them with the new wine. Fill them with the oil. Fill these men to overflowing. Fill them with your joy, Lord. Fill them to overflowing. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. tell you, there's men having their own services here all by themselves. It's great to watch as people are being touched and God's dealing with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for everybody here tonight, but before we do, I want you to turn this way. Follow Pastor Mark, Pastor Shannon, just for, for a moment. We have a gift we want to put in your hands. Just go through this way. You can come right back. Pick him up, carry him through, and then. Come on, isn't that awesome? You could do better than that. Come on. All of heaven rejoices over one sinner that comes to repentance. Hallelujah. All right, stand. Now I've tried to make room in the arena around the edges and around the back without going into the, into the uh, foyer or lobby, whatever you want to call it, and then a front here to line people up because, you know, we've got to line them up so we can pray for them. And you don't have to come for prayer tonight, so you don't feel like you have to. This is only for those that want to. Amen. Because I prayed for many people that felt they had to, and I, did, and I wasted my time. I only wanted to pray for people that want to. Amen. So we're going to pray. Right now, I'm going to ask the Lord for the anointing to come upon this field, upon each and every person. And for each person, is different. The anointing that you receive from the Lord is for your assignment. These people here in the full-time ministry, your ministry will go to another level, another dimension. But there's business people here, there's people that have totally different. If we heard the testimonies of the men that are here, we'd be shocked. We've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers. We've got everything in between. And I know just before the night I was driving around and just talking to different people and just to hear what different people are doing. It's amazing. So I know that when the Lord touches you, it's so that you can go to another level. And I, there were even several people that stopped me and said, since we were here last time and the Lord touched us, we went to another level. So I believe this is going to be a time, this is going to be a high water mark for you in the spirit. Can you say amen? So, Whatever you need from heaven tonight, the Lord will grant unto you. Amen. So just lift those hands to heaven all across the field. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, because the World Economic Forum do not want us to lay hands on anybody, we want to now lay hands on everybody. <laughs> Because they said we should not lay hands on people, and they tried to mock the laying on of hands as though the laying on of hands is something that's not in the Bible. Yet, Lord, we know that it is in your word, 
and the laying on of hands is for impartation. And so tonight, I thank you that as hands are laid upon your people, that the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon them, that they're going to receive from heaven a special anointing and a special touch to do the impossible. That when they get back home, they're going to see that which you promised them. Mountains will be moved out of the way. The circumstances will be turned around. And Lord, I pray even from this very night, they're going to hear phone calls by tomorrow and Friday. So already things are beginning to already move. Because while things are moving here in the spirit, they're moving there in the natural. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come on this field and touch every person. Now, in Jesus' name, from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet, the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of God just falling on people all across this field right now. That's it right now. That's it right now. That's the oil of joy coming on people. That's the oil of joy. That's the new wine being poured out right now. get them all drunk tonight on the new wine of heaven. special anointings tonight. Anointings for the righteous man. Just take just a moment before we line you up to pray. Just tell him what you want. Come on, be specific. Talk to him. Tell him exactly what you want. Tell him exactly what you're believing for. Just be seated just for a moment. I'm giving them opportunity to come back in, all those that went down to the altar call. 
If somebody can let me know when they're all back in. Thank you, Jesus. Bring him here. Come here. Fire. Step over here. Lift your hands. Fire! Cover your hands. The soles your feet. Bring him. Bring him right here. Lift your hands. Jesus! Fire! Pick him up. Careful, careful, careful. Fire. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Pick him up. Pick him up. Lift your hands. Fire. Pick him up. Fire. Pick him up. Pick him up. Fire! Bring this kid here. Bring him here. Step him right here. Fire! From the top of your head. Bring him, step him right back there. Take him back in the clearing. Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men don't get nervous. Righteous men are not nervous men. Righteous men get happy. Bring him here. Step him right over here. Fire! Why? It looks like a tornado hit over here. I have no clue. I don't choose the area. Step right over here. Fire! Hallelujah. How you doing? Step right up. Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. If you see me staring at you because I'm trying to read your name tag. Amen. Some of you have it the wrong way around. I'm trying to look to see who they are, where they're from. You're not going to be the same again, Garrett. You won't be the same again from this night. Come here. Step him right over here. Fire! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Some of the testimonies you'll only hear a year, two, three, four, five, six, seven years from now, 10 years if Jesus tarries. I've had people come to me trying to tell me what happened in 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99 in the meetings. Amen. Somebody said, well, we don't do this in our church. We're not in your church. So relax. It's going to be okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're going to be okay. We've never had anybody die on us. Unless your name is Ananias and your wife's name is Sapphira, you'll be fine. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Huh? Maryland. Originally, Ivory Coast. How long have you been in America? 11 years. So you become an American. You've lost your African. Hmm? It's a sad day. We need for you to come like an African again. Africans are full of life, full of joy. Africans are not sad people. I'm from Africa. Africans are happy people. I didn't see that when I walked up to you. I thought I was walking by a wax dummy, Madame Tussauds. I see you are happy now. The smile came on your face. I feel better now. I was wondering where they brought you from, the mortuary? I was a little nervous. I thought they bring the dead. Don't bring dead people to the men's conference. Try to bring some alive ones. Amen. Let the dead bury the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody back? Are they all back? Are they all back? They are all back. Thank you. When were you going to tell me? Tomorrow morning? I said, tell me when they're all back. People were putting a note in a water bottle, trying to throw it out, hope that I picked it up. Hallelujah. Africans are happy people. Where are you from? Africa. You've been in America too long. I'm from Africa. Africans are happy people. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's do this, shall we? Those on the first row that want prayer, if you'll stand. Amen. Who is this? Is this Ricky or Pastor Eric? It's Pastor Eric tonight. Whoever you are, can yeah. you help line the people up? <laughs> Who wants if to you're, be first? <laughs> if you want to be first and you're on the front row, 
we have these chairs lined up, so come on. We're going to get you all the way up to the front right here. Let me get the next four rows to stand to your feet. We're going to take your personal belongings with you. There's chairs and you're going to make a straight line facing forward. Nobody's standing behind anybody on both sides. And then let me take the next um, three, the last four rows in the back, the last four rows in the back. If you'll stand and go directly by the double cameras, the last four or five rows in the back, you're not going into the lobby. You're going right by the double cameras, and there's chairs lined up. The ushers will have their hands up and you make a straight line right on the chairs with nobody standing behind you. Let me go ahead and get the next four rows up front, the next four fro rows up front to stand. You can come up front. You can come up front and we'll line you up. Then let me get the next two rows in this whole section across. You're gonna stand up and turn to your right, my left, and we're gonna line you up right on the side. So the ushers on the sides, put your hands up. There'll be two rows on the side, right over here. Gonna go straight out the side, the chairs, you'll see chairs and you'll be facing the platform going all the way down. Hey guys, in the front, just raise your hand. Ushers, raise your hand guys and make a straight line right here. You'll see a straight line. Now, if you're watching by way of television and you are a man, this is a men's conference, you can come tomorrow. There is no charge. There is registration, but it's free. There's no charge. Come and be a part with what's happening here tomorrow morning at 9.30, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and Friday the same, and then Saturday morning at 9.30. And there's no Saturday night service and then Sunday morning, Sunday night. But we want to encourage you to come and be a part with us. And I say that because we go off the satellite here in a few minutes. Amen. All those that are rest right here, you turn to your left, my right, and we're going to do two rows right over here. We're going to put two lines on the side. Those that are still coming up, you need to go to your left, or my right, we're gonna line you up on the sides. We will need all those that have experience catching that are part of our team in just a moment to come forward. I'm gonna start on that side, on the far side, yeah. Now while you're lining up, let me just say this to you. I saw this tonight. I saw us lining up everybody and praying over you. In my spirit, I saw this. And I saw the Lord touching people in a profound way. And it was like the Lord said, whatever they ask me for, I'm going to give it to them. So, whether this be a healing in your body or something else, that's why I said earlier, get personal with the Lord. Remember when, when I, before I took received the offering, I said, get personal with him, talk to him about something. Because God is very personal God. And he loves you. Now the laying on of hands is a point of contact. So if you're going to wait for me to push you down, I'm not pushing you down. I'm just going to come, take my hand and place it on your head and say in the name of Jesus. When I do, the power of God will come on you. I'm going to keep moving. So I'm not, if you think I'm going to stand there and pray some long prayer over you, I'm not going to do it. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She touched the hem of his garment. When she touched, virtue flowed out of Jesus into her. And that's all that's going to happen here tonight. You receive by faith that anointing of whatever you need. Amen. Praise God. Look at that. It looks a beautiful sight. Everybody lined up. So let's pray, shall we? Father, I thank you for the laying on of hands, that which you've entrusted to me. And you told me to do this years and years ago. That I thank you as hands are laid upon your people tonight for a special touch and impartation of the anointing of what they need from you for this moment, on this, the final day of the month of August, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon you by the direction of the head of the church. 
And I thank you for an increase in the very anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your life, upon your ministry, in the name of the Lord, in Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak it even now. I speak it even now. I speak it upon you now. I speak it upon you now. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, for thy touch. Brocambra arroto sabrandi remendro soprate brandando prepara bandande ridibo parasto berindo shakandi Bregendo Karanda Galandi Ranga Nabrobo Paranada Parato Saneano Remondo Prepiatai Brombongan Gibro Membro Sarite Pratandero Pratanderiatai Rondo Tiando Mendo Sai Rando Shinde Bro Sai Mando Ai Sorondo Baranai Maranon Secreta Branga i tori, brangi de reto, brangi de reto, branga i rdo sai, murdando rietea, prato sande, prato ato sini, mamo shai, mundo, mindo, mandi, mundo rie, brundai a so a hike, brundai, resto brava, brapandi, baritola, bratila. Brandonda, minore, minere, brando re di esso. Yes, 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 yes. No shamando, midori esso, midori ete, midori ete, barro candi alla voce, bron ai, ma a hai, non so prechia, brangida, brotanderia, brotalai, brotali dendore. Rato Sandi, Brundai, Brokayete, Brule, Supply, Bro Nem, Pash, Tumbre, Menenine, Menenendo Sai, Fundaria, Brusanai, Profonde Lequista, Profonde Lequista, Profonde Lequista, Profonde Lequista, Profonde Leasto, Brandy Show, Brindori Kai. Brutai e soprai, le tu sandere, mando se chiede, brocchino, rotondo, tanto sapai, porrendo, frassonene, brocchini, mendo sabrai, rendo rebai, riso sabai, brunde le bevo sai, brusanene, brocchini, ne tu tanda, brocchino. Yasondo Priato Menduria Se Rosanina Brandelia So Reto Sabai Brungai Mondele Se Rale Briando Randi Gendo Shino Brakandalia So Propora Yes, 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 yes Rota Mande Brandelia Do Prendolia Se Pro Mandelia Se Menduria Ta Brandelia Te Brandoli esse, brandoli ha, so monde, mandoli so, mandoli te, brandoli te, mondoli ta, brandolo se, brandoli kai, brutta da bassa, brandoli sa pratia, brandoli esso, brandoli eke, rotta da basso, brunda e sopra, mandre sopra, rendo brande costombre, rotta da basso. Rindo, yes, ha, woo, brando saka, close your eyes, sopra taya, sopra diata, sopra daya, rondele sopra. I'll go there, work that way, come back, do this line, and then go all the way there, then do that side, then that side. I'm going to go right to the front over here. Mambro sopra paya, burrita. Rite se prepesha prefendo liita. Yes. Yes, the righteous, the righteous, the righteous, the righteous. It shall be well with them. It shall be well. It shall be well with them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you.
Thank you for a pine get no da. Bring it up. 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 Bring it Yes, Yes, Brongelica, Cantaliso, Brongelisa, Randerebosa, Recapatia, Brocai, Brotenere, Ha, so profonde, mi stonde, Fracalando, Trendelieso, Brandi, Bratosa, Brai, Mino de Macaia, Brocamandi, Mina Nanandrando, now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, I loose that anointing now in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now, from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet, now, a special anointing, now, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, now. A quickening even now, now, in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, in the mighty name, right now, right now, right now, now, in Jesus' name, fire, the fire of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God. Ratande, ratando leka, rakanina, maranoto, maraneso, bridanando, baranina, repanomo, mina neso, baranoso, mina nandre, rokananda, rando, sendo, brendo, ina nandore, mina de sopre, retolaba, yandole se. Now in Jesus' name, I lose that anointing right now. Yes, from the top of your head to the very souls of your feet. Fire, the fire of God. Now, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of God, the fire of God right now. The fire of God right now. The fire of God, the fire of God right now. The fire of God right now. In Jesus' mighty name, right now, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, right now, in Jesus' name, fire. Fire of God, now I lose that anointing. Fire, the fire of God, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' name, in the name, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet, I lose that anointing. Right now, 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 fire. Fire of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Holy Ghost, right now, right now, fire, the fire of God, fire of God, right now, fire of God, right now, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now, I loose that anointing, I loose that anointing, I loose that anointing, right now, in the name of Jesus, from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet, right now, in Jesus. Right now, right now, the fire of God. Fire! The fire of God. The fire of God right now. Fire! The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of God. Now, now, now in Jesus' mighty name, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire upon your life in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name. Fire, the fire of God. 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 The fire of God right now. 
fire from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Baramande, Gurunda, Nandra. Fire. The fire of God right now. The fire of God now. The fire of God. The fire of God right now. The fire of God now. In Jesus. Mighty name. The fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 The fire. The fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Now. In Jesus. Mighty name. In the mighty name. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. The name, fire, fire of God, fire of God, the fire of God, yeah, yeah, fire, the fire of God now, the fire of God, the fire of God, right now, in the name of Jesus, yeah, fire, fire, the fire, the fire, the fire of God, 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 right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, in Jesus' name, right now, right now, fire, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, I loose that anointing right now from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, fire, the fire. Fire, fire, now, fire, 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 now, the fire of God, now, fire, fire, the fire of God, now, in Jesus' name, fire, the fire, now, fire, now, I loose that anointing, now, in Jesus' name, fire, 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 now, fire, now, fire, fill. Fire, 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 now, fire, now, fire of God, now, the fire of God, now, the fire of God, now, fire, the fire, the fire, yes, fire, now, fire, 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 the fire of God, fire, 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 fire. The fire of God now, the fire of God now, the fire of God now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Now, thank you, Lord. Now, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, fire, the fire of God. No, fire, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, fire of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of God right now, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, yeah, the fire of God, fire, the fire of God, the fire of God, fire, 
fire of God. From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet right now, I loose that anointing. Even now, a special touch from heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, fire in the mighty name of the Lord. Now, now, now. That's it. From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. Now, now, now. Fuego, the fire. Now, in Jesus' name, in the 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 name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Fire, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. The fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, right now, 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 fire, now, fire, 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 now, 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 fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 now, 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 now. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 now, fire, now, fire, now, fire, 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 now, fire, 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 fire. that stinking thing off your face. Fire! 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 on this property wearing a face diaper. Rip the stupid thing off your face and get free tonight in Jesus' name. Pull that chunk off your head. Fire of God. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fill now, fire, 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 fill, fire, 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 fire. Give them an opportunity to take it off or leave the property. I don't want to see those things on you. We are in Florida. I went to prison so they don't have to wear those things. Those things irritate me and tick me off. Rip that thing off people's face. Don't let anybody on you with a face diaper. 
Flying Devil. It's 2022. The governor has, by law, removed those things. If you've not been prayed for, and only if you've not been prayed for, please come up front, stay fire. right. Fire! 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 Filled! Fire! 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 You're going to leave here with an authority to rip face diapers off of people's heads. Get that stinking thing off your face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like waving a red flag at a bull. You wonder, do people know where they are? Like at least somebody who brings somebody warned the person. That pastor, he don't like those things. Take it off. If you know what's good for you, take it off your face. Guys, just zip the music. Huh. Music. At times you don't need music. Fire! You'll never be the same. Huh? You'll never be the same. Fire! MMA fighter and you came out the wrong side of things, what happened? Yeah, but what happened to you? So the Lord broke you down? Why would he do that? To bring you here? Well, I, I don't believe the Lord broke you down, but I think the devil worked you over. Huh? Huh? Yeah, 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 now. But the Lord didn't do that to you. No, the devil did that. And yeah, don't try to spiritualize it. When Jesus does something that looks beautiful, you look like a train smashed over you. But God's going to make something beautiful out of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Heal these broken bones, this broken body. In Jesus' name and restore to him and may he not be stubborn again so the devil cannot work him over like a bad MMA fight thank you Lord amen <laughs> amen Praise God. The righteous, the righteous have flourished. 
like a palm tree. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just thank the Lord. Everybody gets nervous because I start rebuking face diapers. Like they were all wearing one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, put your hand on his belly. Give him, give him double dose of joy. shall be known as Tom Happily. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been a very serious man for many years. You, you, you know, you in the police force for 25 years. Did you get blessed tonight? Yeah. Except the guy that lost his face diaper. Been hanging on for like 28 months. It's like a walking fungus. Well, don't touch anybody on the floor. Tomorrow morning, is it, who's doing the announcement? Any announcements? Anybody do any announcement about tomorrow morning? Who's doing it? And what do you want to do? Do you want to tell people what's happening? Yeah, so tomorrow, uh, the couple of things. Obviously, at 8.30, everything will open, all the activities, all the booths open. In your newspaper, if you did not already get one, because tomorrow, right after service, also from 1 to 3, all the booths, food trucks, everything will be open. You don't have, even have to leave the property for lunch if you don't want to. Studio B experience, as you saw, that's the new permanent structure that will be feeding. The menus are inside the newspaper. So if you want to know for the plan for what lunch is tomorrow, you can actually get it in the newspaper. Make sure you stop by, get yourself a T-shirt, a hat, the notebook, the new uh, water bottle. Anything that you need, make sure you do that. But tomorrow morning, 8.30, and uh, you can enjoy all the different booths. And, of course, tomorrow, 1 to 3, and then tomorrow night. Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Makes tremendous power available. Dynamic in its working. Throughout history, 
There was always one person that stood up. Their names were known because they made a stand. As I was with Moon, so shall I be with you. There is an army of men being raised up in this hour to part the sea.